The hike to the Bonutepo, which is about two kilometers from the foot of the Shire Hills, depends on an individual's capability and energy level. So quite a rocky path to undertake um, to the caves, but we're treading on and definitely will soon get to the caves. The hiking expedition itself was very challenging. This is because it requires a lot of stamina to ascend the steep, rocky and winding paths to the hilltop where the Bunutepo is located. The trip to the caves is a peculiar task. It is becoming tougher and tougher as we go on with more rocks to meander through and also climb. Francis Ajote, a youth leader of Dodoa, served as our tourist guide. En route to our destination, we found along the way evidence of human habitation during the Stone Age. We use this stone to grind pepper, we plant fufu in it and other ingredients that they want to use. Those days they don't have the pieces and the mortars we use it now. This is what they use to do their things. Yeah, and it is there and we have similar things that shows that people lived here. The new steam trashed along the path leading to the cave. One might think it is a cleared pathway, but our tourist guide explained to us that the pathway never gets overgrown with weeds. This is where they used to their caves, and nobody uses catalyst or hole to clear it. They have been there naturally as it is. He showed us what the ancestors used for demarcation of land. Our forefathers migrated from Israel and they believe in demarcations. The Bible said you should not remove an ancient barrier. So everywhere they go, they believe that this is mine and I have to protect it. So this, is, this plant is what they used to demarcate their lands. Today we use pillars. But they, this is what they used. This area, according to our tour guide, served as a diver ground for the people at that time. Here is their community center or their diver grounds. You know, every community, they have a, a place that they gather when the chief wants to give them a message or anything like that. They have to come together and send a message to them. So this is one of their gathering places. There was evidence of existence of buildings in the hills as the foundations of these buildings are still intact. About 40 minutes trekking, I was completely drenched in my own sweat. At certain points, my legs could no longer hold on, but my soul yearned to locate the cave. My lenses captured a few people also making this memorable and breathtaking trip. <laughs> Some of those who could not ascend halfway the hills made a detour. Others used the opportunity to take photographs. I, however, persevered and with the assistance of our tour guide, we got to the exact area of the cave. What a great relief. But hold on. The real deal starts from here. Mm -hmm. 
The steep descent from the hilltops to the entrance of the cave gave me the jitters, but I managed somehow to get there. And we are now exactly at the entrance of one of the caves of the ancestors of the Shire traditional area. This cave is called Oponu Tepo, and this is where the people hid and fought against their enemy. Then the adventure to the cave began. One has to crawl on all fours to get into the cave. dark inside this cave and we had to use the light of the camera to get you this video. Well, this is one of the exit points in the cave where the ancestors of the Shai traditional area flee from their enemies. Hey, am I going to climb this? <laughs> Getting out of the cave is such a daunting task. One has to hang onto rocks that looked as though it is about to fall any time. I managed, however, to climb, and at times, lie flat on my stomach to make it through to the exit up the cave. But let your leg go straight. <laughs> what a great relief. I did it. Hey. So this is a bird's eye view of the Shy Hills and it's